so we're here with Alphonse Weersink, uh, professor at the University of Guelph, and we are talking about uh, rental prices for, for farmland. So welcome here, Alphonse. Yeah, thank you. Now, you've done uh, quite a bit of work into uh, not just land rents, but to the relationships around land rents and how that might impact uh, the agreements and the price. What, what have you found? Well, uh, interesting. We were initially looking at the extent of foreign land ownership, and we wanted to find out uh, about that uh, by asking uh, farmers about their relationship and who their landlords were. And, uh, and we're interested to see whether relationships did actually affect uh, land rental rates. Uh, there's a view that uh, these outside investors that are coming into agriculture, uh, that's a bad thing, that maybe they charge higher rates uh, um, what we found is that relationships do matter in terms of the type of farmland rental arrangement that's settled uh, or agreed upon. Um, that you're more likely to see a share type of arrangement with family members uh, than if you do not know if the tenant and landlord have uh, more of a, a, an independent or distant relationship. Um, but that relationships don't affect uh, the level of cash rent. Okay, and so so now obviously land prices uh, have been very strong, have been have been you know growing uh, at a pretty alarming rate, maybe in some depending on if you're trying to yeah. buy land or if you're trying to sell it. Um, how has that impacted rental rates or agreements, and and what might be some of the risks of of you know land rents just continually increasing? Yeah, land rents have followed uh, land prices, maybe at uh, at a little slower rate of increase, but uh, um, but yeah, they've uh, you know let's say in in parts of southern Ontario. I was just talking to a farmer yesterday who had a a three year rental arrangement where he was paying two hundred dollars uh, in rent uh, for each of those three years, and now it's gone up to two hundred and seventy five, and and he feels uh, and he feels pretty fortunate at, at that level. So. Wow. That's in a you know a fifty percent increase approximately over the last three years, so there have been some dramatic increases in land rent, uh, particularly over the last couple years uh, since two thousand ten, two thousand ten, two thousand eleven, uh, two thousand twelve, and it looks like it's it's going to continue that way for two thousand thirteen. Mm -hmm. And so now, obviously, land prices is partially driving this. Crop prices, of course, are are driving this as well. Um, you know what? What's the risk, though, or or what are there some recommendations around agreements that you set up in that you know if crop prices tank halfway through the year, and you know the inputs are in the ground and the seeds in the ground, and you've you know you've agreed to these really high prices. I mean, what is the risk for the not just the farmer but the landowner as well? Yeah, the well, um, what we what we've seen over time is that that uh, landowners are they want or they desire cash rents. Uh, about 80, more than 80 percent of the land rental agreements uh, involve a cash rent. And the landlords just like the the money up front. Uh, they don't really want to take any of the risks. So it's mm -hmm. the the tenant, the farmer, that's assuming most of the risk. Over the last uh, three years, um, it's been upside risk. Um, mm -hmm. you, you know, I'll use 2012 as an example. Um, at this time last year, you know, I think Farmers were looking at five, six dollar corn, five fifty uh, corn, and because of the drought in the U.S. Midwest, um, you know, it, some guys sold for eight dollars and maybe even higher. And uh, so the returns on that uh, that particular property uh, were greater than anticipated. And I think some of that optimism is carrying forward into the land rents that uh, people are offering this year, mm -hmm. lords. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a that's taking most of the risks right now right um, right so but you know on the on the flip side of that of course um, you know as as rental prices or, or agreements sort of start to to increase if crop prices start to fall um, you know from from my perspective let's say it's ahead of the growing season um, you know, as a land owner, the, the stewardship of that land and the care of that land starts to become maybe the only management factor you can change if you're locked into a price. Um, and yeah. so let's say, um, 
you know, if, if crop prices start to fall and you've already agreed to something, you know, it, what should farmers maybe, should they try and broach that with their, with their landowner and, and maybe come up with something, you know, a different agreement or, or what do you do in that situation? Yeah. Um, yeah, there are a couple points that you bring up there, Lindsay. One is how can you share the risk? Because, mm -hmm. uh, um, prices, um, prices could jump up again if we have bad weather conditions, given the, the stock to use ratios, the markets are edgy and uh, any sort of shock like that could send prices up. But we could just as easily see prices for corn in the $5 and lower range. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so how can you, as a tenant, um, uh, share some of that risk? And there are share agreements where you uh, agree to split the returns. Uh, for example, on a corn, maybe it might be 40, 60, with uh, 60 going to the tenant and 40 going to the, the landowner. Um, there are some other uh, uh, potential arrangements where you guarantee the landowner a set amount and say, I'll pay you $200 an acre. Um, and that covers your expenses per, you know, under the low uh, it covers your expenses under a low price scenario, but if prices go up, uh, you agree to, to uh, split the increase in, in returns. Um, so there are some, uh, some ways, and I think producers should be looking at some of these ways that, that minimize some of the downside risk, because it's hard to imagine corn prices going you know, much higher than uh, mm -hmm. $7 where they're at now. Mm -hmm. um, but you can, I think the probability of them going lower is... Uh, it, it, is not trivial that's for sure yeah no it's definitely something to to think about and to anticipate and manage for if you can so yeah. we can't control it but you can manage for it right so that's right. okay well i'm sure we'll be talking again about this it's certainly a very uh it's top of mind certainly i was out at a at uh crop week in saskatoon uh last week and out west that it's a similar now we don't have the level of land rents that you do uh, out east, but uh, certainly it's it's also very top of mind for farmers here as land prices increase as well, and mm -hmm. um, starting to get into territory that's never been seen before. So yes. it, it's across Canada, and it's it's definitely something that farmers are, are talking about and curious about and and trying to manage for. So I appreciate the time, and we will likely talk again on this topic. All right, thanks. Okay, Lindsay. thank you. Okay, bye.